Hello. Hello. Where have you been? Where have we been? Well, we're going to update you. We've been a bit busy, haven't we? We have. We've had we have had a couple of weekends off from the van build. Um, first, we were away at a um, vloggers meetup. So we're in a, a, a what do they call it? A collaboration. Yeah, we're in a collaboration group. And um, we all decided to meet up. That was lovely. Where did we go? Summerswood. Summers. Never been there. Um, absolutely love that that campsite. Yes, it's definitely a very nice go. site. Yeah, we yeah. definitely go back mm-hmm. there again. Um, and then straight after the next weekend, we had Herman Fest. So um, quite a lot of the same faces from the weekend before, and yeah. a lot of new ones as well. Um, we were at Tucker's Grave for that, and um, yes, lots of fun was had even though it was a bit wet and windy the weather was temperamental but um we still all managed to catch up and have a nice yes. weekend so i think we probably need to update you from the background you'll probably notice the van looks vastly different to the last time you saw it and um let you know what we've completed um, what our current projects are and get you up to date the electrical system is very close to being complete a couple of minor projects to do with mood lighting as well as a 240 volt socket to operate the LPG hob gas ignition. This is something I'd wished I'd completed much earlier on in the project. Using an EcoFlow power bank and a temporary fuse board helped a lot, but the build was way, way easier with proper electric. We have chosen the Renergy system and a Go kilowatt hour, 200 amp hour lithium battery. This represents a really good value for money and this system is married to a pair of 220 watt Craig solar panels. There is space to add an additional panel if so required. This combination B2B MPPT controller has a rather nice party trick. Excess solar panel power is used to keep the vehicle battery fully charged. A 2000 watt Renergy inverter charger has been installed. This is something that assumes what I call American electric and it has to be made right and proper for European power. Thank you to Jolly from Vanderkamp Adventures for pointing me in the right direction, more than once. All connections have had the crimps pull tested and correct square millimeter ratings have been calculated and applied. The earth and ground situation, if anything, has been a little over specified, but I'm happy with that. I'd sooner have a little bit too much here than not enough. All fusing on the panel is accessible and visible and I've chosen to use the mega fuses just because they look pretty. A 4G router has been wired in. Thank you, Glenn, for that. I'd be happy to go into more detail about this setup if anybody wants to hear about it. Drop us a comment. Who knows, there may even be a dedicated video about the electrics if the demand is there. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to keep in touch. We've wired in the, the lights in the alcove in the bedroom. We've put down a couple of USB ports right behind us. This is where the kitchen is going to be. That's all wired in, ready to go. Um, oh, with a fan as well, that great big thing hanging yes, from there. Yes, we have, at no expense spared, installed a Sirocco 2 fan. Um, we did buy a cheaper fan. It was a boat fan. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded, well, oh my gosh. It was so loud really so loud it made just... your fillings vibrate every time you turn it on it, it's awful <laughs> <laughs> so i always wanted a sirocco fan but i just was like oh can i really justify the expense and then when that cronky thing turned up i was like yeah no a sirocco <laughs> fan it is it's very nice um as as we'll demonstrate it um extends out back around um has several settings it's on a timer yeah so yeah a nice fan has been installed what else have we got over there? What else have we got over there? I think I've briefly mentioned the two USB ports. Those are going to be in the bedroom. So there is a, a Type-C and a Type-A. So you can charge a, a phone and a something like an Apple Watch. Uh, we're, we're going to be putting a shelf under there so you can put your stuff on there to charge at night. And I'm having a quick look what else we've got over there. I think I briefly mentioned the, the alcoves. Um, we haven't spoken about what we've done in the bedroom at all. So we've... No. Um, We've got an extra 60 mil per side on the bed because we didn't feel it was quite long enough. So um, three quarters of the bed's width, you should be able to stretch out a little bit further. So instead of packing the whole thing out with the battening and putting the tongue groove on, we've just put some 
yeah, the 25 mil Celotex, Cel Celotex yeah. foam uh, with a little bit of ply over the top and carpet it to, to give an, a little bit of extra space. And we think it looks very good. Yeah, so you'll have the insulation, but also if your tootsies touch the end, it's got board on there as well. Yeah, so. and oh, you know, we, what we also put in is a little bit of the closed cell foam. So it's a kind of soft yeah. to the touch. So that's the that's the bedroom area. It's all boxed in. On this side, as you can see behind us, we've done the, the tongue and groove from this board over here. This is going to be back of the cupboard. We've done the door card. Yeah. So that was a case of one step forward and two steps back. Um, I decided that the door cards that we originally put in with the pretty fairy rope lights and we had a cut out Highland cow on one side and we had a, a nice sign on the other. I was a bit worried it was a bit too personalised so that mm -hmm. if we wanted to, to, you know, which we do, want to sell it on, um, it might put people off. So we've taken that out. Who may get replaced in another location in the van, but um, just to keep her identity. We've replaced it with new door cards. Pete cut some lines in it using the track saw. Um, it's had a couple of coats of paint. Um, I think once the van is completed, I'm gonna have to give anything that's painted another coat of paint just to um, tidy up to um you know finish off yeah we're still banging around in here occasionally we, we we make contact with the painted surface and give it a little bit of a scuff but you know it needs yeah. the, the final coat yeah. when once everything is finished yeah. we've put another group big hole in the van yeah so we've um we've had the diesel heater very very early on in the build and it's I've been, been sat in our bedroom for for the whole duration months. of this build yeah. really and i've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off so eventually you know we got to work out where the position is now underneath the floor of the van there are you know cross members of the chassis there's some gusset plates everything like that so at the end of the day well you, you know it's something that you put off for no good reason um apart from it seems intimidating at first but i just got stuck in got the measuring tape out a little bit of masking tape this is where we're going there was the the hole and we had to use it. it's a great big hole saw uh, 127 mil diameter I think I burnt out the the old drill altogether, and the the new drill that we bought recently, um, let's say, has um, had eight of its nine lives. And how many actually whole saw fingers did you go through? Two. Yeah, and yeah. and the second one's now knackered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just didn't want to go through. It was such a long and slow process. I could hear him out there. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it's through. It's <laughs> through. So we've got the turret in. Uh, we put some heat resistant um, sealant in there to, to hold the turret in place. The diesel heater is sitting on top of the thing to, to keep the draft out at the moment. Uh, again, another windy day down here in Somerset, uh, just for a change. Yeah, you might notice we're wobbling around <laughs> a bit. The, the van is being buffeted. <laughs> We've done the, the bulkhead between the, the cab and the habitation area. Yeah, we've installed a couple of switches, one for the welcome light and one for the awning light. Um, at the top there, we've just got some fun added, a couple of doggy tail hooks um, that you can hang either your keys from or you can, we, we intend to, hold, to put the dog leads on there. Your hat, whatever you want. Yeah, just for a bit of fun. Curtain um, pole. Got some lovely curtains and, and a lovely curtain pole. I was very excited when I saw this. Um, yeah, matte black. The curtains white uh, weren't quite the colour I was ex well. They weren't. I didn't read the packet properly. So they are thermal blackout curtains. Um, They're definitely curtains. <laughs> but I didn't realise they were made of velour. Um, it's not the end of the world. Um, they do. They do the job. They do what they need to do. And actually, it doesn't mismatch too badly with the graphite oh, fits granite in. cover. Yeah, it goes in with the carpet. So, and, um, as far as I can see. Yeah. So. We've installed uh, the carbon carbon monoxide, monoxide detector. Monoxide detector as well. A nice, neat, small one. In black. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! Why do you have to pay more for things in black? If I'd have bought it in white, it would have been half the price. That was quite expensive. Um, so we still need a I can't smoke find alarm, a, don't we? I can't find a smoke alarm in black, so it might be a case of. Um, Buying a white one, take the cover taking off the and cover spray off, it. putting pins in all the holes so they don't get blocked, and spray painting yeah, something it. Something like that. Um. You have to 
Apart from a bit of fine tuning, that's the front bulkhead all finished. And we're both extremely happy with the result. We've popped up the curtain rail over here, put wood against the metal all the way around, and made a nice little air dam at the bottom and even put a little piece of skirting board. 230 volt socket and what we're calling a welcome light. So there will be two switches over here, one of which will turn on the bottom light, the other one will turn on the awning. I haven't got around to doing the wiring for that yet, but it's almost finished. little bit of dog proctology over here and the first of our alarms the carbon monoxide a piece of wood has two sides so this is what it looks like from the cab the light gray carpet will say thanks to Colin for you know who you are as we sit here looking at the van I'm like okay do I need to do that and I need to do that and I need just little silly bits they're like I suppose if you were a builder you'd put it you'd call it your snagging list mm -hmm. um, so I have to keep trying to put those off because Although yeah, we've got to have a doing list first, <laughs> yeah. I think. So we've got to go and you know, do a whole lot of yeah. things now. Come back and snag minor things. Of course, if it's a major thing that needs a whole lot of redoing, we'll, we'll just do it at this point. Yeah, no, it's just little things that I'm like, oh, OK, yeah, that would be a bit better or... Yeah. So, so chatting this morning, we think we were actually quite far along with the build. I hadn't realised until I looked at a video Pete was editing yesterday. Um, um, I hadn't realised actually how much we had done on the van. I just keep thinking, oh God, this is taking forever, it's taking ages, and mm. but actually, yeah, <laughs> looking at, looking yeah, at it from that progress, video and looking yeah. at it now, it's like, whoa, I think we're a good two thirds of the way through, yes, actually, we definitely, yeah, yeah. you know, we just need to finish electrics, finish getting the walls covered. Yep. Um, well, this wall behind us, look how quick, once we yeah. set our mind to it, look how quickly it went up, it you did, know, the top it of the groove. Bump, it did fly up. Yes. Um, a lot easier doing the wall than the ceiling because, well, first of all, it's a you know, hand level, whereas yeah. the ceiling, there's a lot of levitation work involved to get those things up. And we, we've got it, um, the whole thing, yeah. you know, like a little factory at the moment with that, you know, chop saw, chop it up, knock it in, a little piece of waste wood, uh, nail, 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 you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Very easy, make quick progress, it was very nice. So once, you know, once that's done, we're actually looking at the stage of doing the carpentry for... Yeah. Um, the, the cabinetry. The cabinetry for the seats and the cupboards. Seats, cupboards. Shelf here and there. Yeah, yeah. sink. Um, so, enough yapping. Yep. Time to get doing. Yep. Catch you in a bit. Okay. Some time has passed. We have just cracked on with more stuff. Here's a bit of woodwork for the under bench lids. It's for ventilation and weight reduction. Here is the main bulkhead. There are four alcoves. These shelves provide a bit of extra storage or you can store pretties in them. The shelves even light up at night. Passenger side overhead storage. A little bit of work remains to be done here, but lights are installed inside. In the bedroom are two sets of USB ports and a Sirocco fan. Shelves will soon be added. Next to the bedroom is the control panel followed by the driver's side overhead storage, underslung lights still to be fitted. Seating arrangements are now finalised. We have a bench seat with loo and storage. Here's the driver's side window showing wood frame and integrated blinds. This is where the sink will go. Water level indicators are already installed. Another view of the seating and storage area. There is a 240 volt socket and a pair of USB charging points. A light up at night toilet. How posh are we? Pull out the drawer and the lights turn on. Close the door and they turn off. We are thinking that the space behind is good for toilet paper and chemical storage. We're going to be taking a short break from the van build. Where are we going? We're going to need the sticker. And when we get back, we're going to tackle the kitchen. <laughs> 